Hey everybody, this is Derek Stevens. I'm the Crow on the Forums, doing the Crow's Nest, rocking it out with Fifty Shades of Nelson. Uh, Mr. Steve Curtis, uh, NATO Nitro. I always get the names confused. One of the lads are here. We we got Wolf, uh, Miguel. We have several people here tonight, which I'm very excited about because, as you know, uh, tomorrow is the American holiday, Thanksgiving, and uh, eat, drink, and be merry. So we're going to get started tonight. Uh, you can see my screen, some uh, little battle mechs and robot ideas that I've come up with. And we'll explore that. i got several ideas to come up with tonight. But uh, I know Miguel is going to have to be going early tonight, and he's got some work from the last couple of weeks that he wants to show. So, Mr. Fifty Shades of Nelson, if you could take Miguel's screen, that would be fantastic, please. Thank you, sir. Miguel, baby, what's going on with you tonight? Miguel, now, baby, I told you that we were going to be taking your screen. Uh, yeah, but uh, this computer kind of is freezing a little. So, just give me a freezing. second. No worries, I'm freezing too. Lots of snow oh, and okay. ice in North Carolina. Really? Is it very cold over there? It, I guess that's a relative term, because if I say that I'm cold, yeah, Steve... I totally don't want to hear it. <laughs> Steve will make fun of me. It's it's in the 20s right now. Steve will like, oh, it's, it's plenty good up here in Wisconsin, eh? Yeah, the, uh, the wind chill's negative up here in Wisconsin, eh? Oh, don't you know? That's why you guys talk like that, because it's so freaking cold outside. You don't want to, to open your mouth any bigger than you got to. Because we're actually Canadians. We sit around drinking two furs. <laughs> Rock on. Miguel, look at this. I like your garbage. I just have, yeah, I just have a bunch of junk that, <laughs> that I, you told me to do two weeks ago, I think. I'm awesome. still missing the texture, so it will have to be the geometry for now. No, no, that's fine. Yeah, well done, sir. Looks like a bunch and of junk to there, There's actually only, I think, five or six pieces. Well, these are the actual pieces that I mold. Well, with the the advent, I know we're not using CryEngine, but uh, we got to actually see a height map from Mr. J last night, not last night, last class, imported into CryEngine, and it was beautiful. Um, and we, we got a couple other meshes done. We, we'll have this to be able to utilize now. Uh, I love it, man. Really, really nice work, especially once you get those textures on there. Now, you're going to have to drop it in the, the, the folder. Uh, what does he need to save it out as, Mr. Uh, Steve Curtis? Uh, the actual geometry? Yes. Uh, FBX would be preferable or OBJ, object. Right. Is probably about okay. to... Now, do you have you have access to the Dropbox, correct? Yes, I I have access. So look how nice and clean. I yes. Excuse me. And they're nice and clean. Oh, uh, and I'm not going to steal Mr. Steve's thunder, but if you want to share with uh, what the new engines can and cannot do, Mr. Steve, for modeling purposes. Um. Well, I would guess most everybody knew, knows this. I just studied quite some years ago, but um, well, I've, I've been I've been pushing Derek to uh, make sure he only uses quads and tries as he has to. And uh, I talked to one of the instructors at Gillen Hall, and he's like, "Now nah, you can do whatever these days; it doesn't matter." So um, you can intersect geometry, you can have n-gons. None of it matters. All the modern engines convert them to tries anyway. So. I was blown away by that, again, because, you know, a lot of my experiences comes from Unreal Tournament 2004, where you were limited to X, and they must be clean with this and this and that. So that's just like a revelation. It's like the Dark Ages is over. Light has been lifted, or darkness has been lifted. Yeah, I, I took it basically to mean I'm old, <laughs> and I didn't know that. <laughs> well, I remember Space Invaders from the Atari. That was some good entertainment back in the day. Okay, so I must really have to go, but I just have an, one more thing to show you guys. Okay. All right. 
I was doing, uh, I decided to do a little concept for the minion, the robot minions that you were talking about. Okay. And, well, I did, well, this. <laughs> well, this is not, there it is. I love that art. Nice! Really good, Miguel. I love your sketch. I mean, I love this right here, but I love that loose feel of sketch that you did. You have come so far in such a short amount of time. I like yeah, that. Yeah, well, that's, this is the first pass. Uh, there's the second. And that's the third pass. Uh, well, and that's the final with all the details that you mentioned on the previous session about that you wanted to see the the, the mechanics inside that to give her. I mean, dude, I'm jumping like a bit to model that. Freaking awesome! Yeah, Definitely I, I put your work to... put your work in the Dropbox, dude. Okay, I'll do. Yeah, that's very nice. I like that, I, and I like that it's not a, a biped or a quadruped. I mean, that is a definite robot with a very cool, unique, sleek feel. I... Which side are you thinking that for? Uh, excuse me? <laughs> human. Which, um, humans? Mm. Yeah, robot. they're the only ones with robots, I'm pretty sure. Well... Hmm. It's not the style I would go for. Um, it's a little too organic looking, almost a, too, a bit too high-tech, almost. It's a, almost a little thinking. bit Halo-like. Um, possibly, but not the human sides in Halo, but um, a bit looks a bit too much like the, mm -hmm. it looks a bit too much like the Protoss from Starcraft to me, but not so much not not in the sort of way that it, it's it's plagiarized or anything like that, but just I don't think it fits with the other stuff I've seen for the humans. Um, but if you if you kind of mm, kind of made that out of out of almost crystalline sort of metal like sort of structure. It would be a really interesting model really really interesting for the Elithians. Um well, yeah. like a sun I'll contract thing. and modify it to just fit that. That's a damn good idea. Because yeah. all of the Elithian stuff I've seen has all been kind of smooth edges and rounded off um, kind of geometry, which that is quite some you know, there's quite a lot of sort of rounding off on that, it's quite smooth. Um, and I was thinking the idea of having humans being a bit more hard-edged to kind of visually distinct them, maybe visually distinct. Well, I can do that thing with the crystals you mentioned to make it look like it in the side of the Elithians. Actually, the head is, I did it thinking about it, the Elithians, so, so it maybe fit with them better. Yeah, okay, think... it's a very good idea. I think if you change like the mechanical elements to like a glow with maybe some like runes or something in them, that'd make it look really Elithian. You almost wouldn't have to change much of anything at all other than some of the details. No, no I think of it, even the head shape is a little Elithian. Which, See, this uh, is what I love about the... should probably look a little bit different because, uh, you know, just... Well, this is what I love about everyone coming together. Uh, whenever we work in isolation, and again, speaking from true experience, and I'm here all by myself, I'm thinking I have the greatest idea in the world, and I bring it to you guys, and you guys have a different way of seeing things. So this is a collaboration. is awesome. Very cool idea. Can, can you work that out, Miguel, for next class? Sure. Uh, I'll try to make it a lithium then. <laughs> I really love your line weights, dude. Very nice, very smooth, very clean, very, very nice read. Uh, the idea was to not be a robot, but some kind of summon creature type rock creatures. Uh, so you like to look more organic then? Uh, I think like all you really need to do to make it look like a summon creature would be to change the mechanical bits to like glowing crystal things with runes in it. Then it'd look like a magical construct of some sort, or like a summoned rock creature. You could do it mostly with textures and glow. Oh, so they probably need a little more. Oh, you golem. What I mean, this would not have to be a machine, it has to be something that is alive, then. Right. Well, the Alethians are, they're, 
they're still made of crystals, so they'll still look somewhat machine-like. So it's it's pretty close to what the Alethians would be summoning anyway. Yeah, define oh. alive, almost. Yeah. There, there'd be like uh, um, a, a lot of like edges, like cut diamond type thing looks for the crystals. If you can take my screen, Mr. Fifty Shades of Nelson, because I want to show Miguel uh, the rock creatures I was coming up with last week. And I would like to say that I like your idea a lot better. Uh, that is, yours is more stylistic, I think. Mine's just like a bunch of rocks thrown together. Uh, but I like that idea. I think we definitely need to explore that coming together. I, I like that sleek, nice, pristine look that you, you've got. I think it, it could even be a um, slightly transparent. Mm, I'd hold off on the transparency. Uh, uh, that's what I meant. Because it shouldn't be transparent. Yeah. Um, especially if we want to go with the sort of diffuse appearance more than than sort of with lots of normal maps and stuff on top. Um, keeping the textures quite simple, uh, the materials quite simple even. What we can do is, since we have three different minions, uh, the smaller guys, or the medium, I, I guess, because I'm thinking the, the jackals uh, that I, I drew more for the DPS sort of uh, attack, and you can have Miguel's, you know, retooled structure robot or crystallized thing could use, uh, I guess, for ranged attacks, and then we can have these big guys here who knock down the towers. What do you think? Well, uh, okay, so Miguel's like, I gotta go, I don't know, just say yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really, really have to go. All right, man, you go. Uh, go ahead and retool that for us, and we'll see you next class, okay, dude? Okay, see you, see you next week. Good job, good job. Uh, Thank you. Am I going? Let me go. Man, we've got uh, some new people here. I know that. Uh, if you can, if, you, if you're new here, go ahead and raise your hands. Uh, feel free to come in and talk to us. I love to hear your ideas and thoughts, and, and definitely ask some questions. Cause you may or may not have, uh, you know, studied up on everything we've done so far. So if you're new, go ahead and raise your hand. Uh, not literally raise your hand. There's a, there's a button that you can raise your hand, and Fifty Shades and Nelson can see that, and they can bring you in. Uh, as long as you have a mic. Everybody's already in. Everybody's already in? Yes. Um, Is that a I have a question. Yes. Uh, as, as far as the siege units go, uh, are, they, are they typically uh, melee, or they, can they also be range? Uh, traditionally, they're melee. Um, mm -hmm. Well, no, traditionally they are ranged, sorry, the super minions are traditionally melee. Um, so, well, there's nothing stopping us playing around with that, though, so. Because I, I had an idea for, uh, on the human side, a robot thing that's a siege thing. I haven't gotten around to drawing it yet, but uh, just wanted to make sure if that uh, uh, was acceptable. I'm open to most things, really, at the moment. Yeah. All right, so who else is here right now? Let's do a roll call. Just shout your name out. I'm I'm Derek. I'm here. I know Steve is here. Who else is all here? I'm decidedly not here. <laughs> okay. Nito's here. Jizba's here. Wolf is here. Rick is here, but he has no ma mic. Okay. If Rick can type in Buzznet any of his questions or thoughts, I'd like to know uh, some more about some more about Rick. Uh, Nitro says his uh, mic isn't working. Okay. Drive back. Okay. How many are in the pre already? Who's that? Who's that? Who are we getting? I need sound through. Let's do this. Mr. Wolf, uh, do you have anything you want to show this week? Uh, yeah. I, 
I have a sketch. Is that Mr. Okay. Fifty Shades of Nelson? Well, <laughs> is somebody trying to place an order? So I'd like some French fries. Mr. Fifty Shades, if you can take uh, Wolf's screen, that would be great. Hey, can you go see me now? Yes. Yes, Hello? yes. Okay, got my mic fixed. It's all good. Hello? Hello. Hey. All right, so you got some more gears on this guy tonight. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a new guy, but it's similar. But, uh, so I uh, decided no um, hands just be guns uh, right here, so no uh, uh, hands aren't really necessary because I, I figure that uh, if humans want them to do something else, they could uh, uh, probably, I was thinking of it as kind of a um, modular uh, setup and you just take it off and put it on an arm uh, that has a hand on it or whatnot. And uh, but for right now, their their sole purpose is uh, to shoot. And uh, so um, it's rough, but uh, so it'll be colored in so you could, so could read a little bit better. All right, we we really need to find out who is sending <laughs> that stuff through. There's Thomas, Mr. No. Okay. Wolf, you still there? Yep. All right. I like it. What do you think, Mr. Gizmo? You're muted again. Uh, I like it. Um, I think it's better than the uh, thong guys we had last week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> How dare you. <laughs> Sorry. But, no, I, li I like the robot legs, and it definitely looks more human than, uh, like, a human-style robot, I, I think. Uh, the only thing I can think of is maybe make the feet like bulkier or like flatter or something, just so it's because the Elithians have feet oh. just pretty similar to that. That's true. So like I don't know, flat stompy feet, I guess. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Kind of more like a transformer fit. Yeah. Bring out, but... bring out the thong. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who do not know this, uh, last week, uh, poor Mister Wolf. <laughs> it's a manzir, <laughs> and, and I understand Wolf is trying to like really get into detail and flesh it out. Just and this design, is I mean. it's, it's design. A little, yeah, a little bit of design on the thing. You know. But working yeah. in isolation, you sometimes right. don't see stuff. <laughs> and then poor Mr. Jizba, he just about had a heart attack and will not let the, the bra go or the thong. Steve, Steve is the one who pointed it out, I believe. Uh, I don't think I was to blame for that. Uh, huh. Huh. I'm not blaming you. I, I anyway. jumped right on the bandwagon. I will admit that much. <laughs> huh. All right. Well, I, I I could definitely see it as soon as it uh, was pointed out. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm right. Very happy. Mr. Jisba, do you have anything to show tonight? I know you were working on a, a model of uh, the turrets. You're muted again. I've got it modeled. I just don't have it textured. I, I won't hold that against you. Can you? Can we take your screen and let you show it off? Absolutely not. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead and take it. I about my heart skipped a beat. I'm like, what the crap? Nice. And there it is. It's not quite like what I drew because I realized I'd probably use more polys the way I drew it, so I sort of simplified it. I like the walls in front of it. It makes sense that it would be there because, you know, people will be shooting at it, trying to stop it. How many polys does it come in? Uh, 2,500. It's not bad. Not bad at all. My biggest comments on it, basically, are the back legs look too sort of s not organic but they're too fluid for the rest of the construction. Uh, I'm not sold on the top, the actual cannon part. It looks a little too 
1950s, 1940s sci-fi, if you know what I mean. It's kind of big and bulky and, and ray gun style. That's that's kind of the look I thought we were going for. Okay. Um, I'm unconvinced by that currently. Uh, I like the I like the main body of it and the um, kind of ablative shielding. That's really nice. Um, yeah, it's good. It's coming along. I like it. Yeah, my only concern are uh, the anchor points of the legs. They they do they almost look like organic. I think something okay. that would go well for the legs could be like those sort of Starcraft style um, or vehicle style legs that sort of fold down and hammer into the ground for those mobile stability. Type oh, like mobile crane type legs. Yeah. Yeah, they You see them on um, tractors and stuff as well that sort of fold down and dig into the ground. NATO, have you ever seen uh, Space 1999? Yes. <laughs> Brilliant British series. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, that's kind of the like human side mechanical art style I was thinking. Um, I mean, some elements of that like 70s smoothness, but then a lot of mechanical looking pieces as well. Hmm. Yeah, that's kind, sure. of, that's kind of what I thought we were going for, too. Um, I can tweak the legs a bit, and we can do a couple different things with them. It won't take that long. I can sort of pillage other parts of the gun to make different legs, and just save it out as different files. <laughs> Should we do sketches of this sort of stuff before we start modeling uh, it? There was actually a sketch of the gun. Um, hold up. That's pretty. Yeah, that was something I did earlier this week. We could use it for concept for the game, like another level, but I don't know if we need to worry about that yet. So yeah, there was the original concept for the gun. Hmm. So I, I bulked it up a bit because I thought that was a little bit too. I don't know. That would that one seemed a little bit too curvy, but. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, show me the gun again now. So is this meant to be for the main sort of towers and the lanes? Yeah, that's kind of the idea. It does look a bit flimsy for a tower, for a guard tower. Yeah, it does a little bit, but at the same time, it th I was thinking it's going to be rather large compared to a person. Like, you're not going to reach the top of those little defensive things there. Ah. One of my, One of the issues that comes up from a technical standpoint is that Towers, in theory, need to be able to change the direction they're firing in very quickly um, because they could be firing at one target and then the target priority can change. So they could need to revolve around 180 degrees and in, in, you know, between shots, which won't be very long. Um, so something that long would suffer from kind of the uh, having to change angle quickly and also um, depending on the range you are from it. I mean, some of that is is if you made the, the ablative shielding less front arc and more kind of 180-degree arc from the front. Um, so it's more of a cylindrical shape rather than a spearhead shape. Okay. That would make me less nervous about it, really. <laughs> yeah, and I could change the top to like a more minigun-style thing instead of the big cannon. We could just throw that back someplace bigger. Because, I mean, eventually we're going to need multiple versions of the gun, so... Yeah, yeah. It's a hell of a start. Good start. You could try, um, rather than a, rather than a minigun, some kind of, like, um, sort of rocket array. So, uh, I'm just double-checking. Like, changing, like, the gun barrels is relatively fast, so... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so I could we could even I could even do a bunch of them. We could pick out like three and have like a different kind of gun at each different turret place. Mm -hmm. 
So it'll be easy enough to do. Yeah, it is. It is relatively uh, simple to change that sort of stuff. All right. Okay. I like it. Poly counts great. Needs to be where it needs to be. Uh, we got some constructive criticism going on, and pretty quick fixes. Yep. Well done, Mr. J. Proud of you. Oh, why? Thank you. I don't care what Steve says about you. He can say what he want, wants. I'm too cool for that. He's just jealous. <laughs> Fine, that's true. Throwing down the smack talk, G. All right, what other artists do we have to uh, in here tonight? Anybody? Uh, does any of the people who don't have mics uh, have anything? Sure. Where's that crazy Frenchman at? Nope. I don't have Buzznet open, so I can't remember his name. I always call him my, my crazy Frenchman. He's great at concept art. Is, is anybody there a crazy Frenchman? Oui. <laughs> All right, maybe not. Go ahead and uh, take my screen, Mr. Fifty Shades Nelson. Thank you, thank you. All right, so let me get my stylus or tablet thing all working. Here we go, number one, two, and three. Uh, the only thing, I mean, I like them. They're nice, quick, easy to do, but uh, I feel they look very human-esque. I think this one here could pull off uh, what we were talking about, some sort of... Uh, robot to move heavy machinery and stuff that can be retooled with really the rocket launchers up through here and then can use this for for shields and this bashing crap for a melee type sort of guy this to me is more of a this sort of little person we can actually sit in here. Hey, look at me! I'm a big robot guy. Sort of thing. Yeah, they do. They do remind me of the Battletech stuff, which is good because I, I think that kind of great big angular style fits more. I actually really like the, the third one there, the one at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Um. I think he's a little too soft. Um. For. Kind of. Um, the human side, I think, a bit more angular, like the one on just to the right of it. But I like how, kind of, I like the posture. Um, it's kind of very ostentatious, almost. It, if you can transform into a motorcycle, I'm I'm on board. <laughs> Let me put his the, wheel the right here for you. There you go. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a mechanical horse. <laughs> There's his back wheel. No, there think you go. about think about that. If uh, the minions, if someone could turn into motorcycles, you jump on them, ride them up to the thing, then uh, uh, jump off of them, they transform back into a robot and fight. So it's pretty cool. I'm seeing Robotech then. Robotech. I love Robotech. I I love that you know Robotech. Heck yeah, man! It's the best show in the world. Well, not the best show, but it was good. I like the fact that it showed when the city was destroyed, it wasn't rebuilt the next cartoon day, you know what I'm right. saying? That war yeah. had consequences, and sometimes your main characters died. And right, like, exactly. Like, what the crap time. Was? Yeah, I'm like, I thought good guys shot blue lasers and bad guys shot red lasers. <laughs> they, one got them at Walmart, one got to Kmart, and they got together. And It's, it's kind of like... If uh, the, the stormtroopers were shooting red shirts in Star Trek, would the, the, the fight ever end? Well, it's, it's like GI Joe, how they used to—they would just shoot, and everybody would miss, and then and then the side that got the most vehicles blown up would run away. Exactly. It's awesome. Here's some silhouettes I've done before, but I kind of like these guys, and I didn't know if we wanted to go this big and bulky for some of the robots. Well. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it depends, I guess, on the scale. 
well, uh, on the scale uh, compared to uh, what the humans and the lethians look like. I mean, it, I don't think, uh, well, it's, it's hard to say. I'm not sure if you want, um, if you want them uh, to be actually bigger than the heroes. You know, if you want them to be towering over the heroes, that might be weird. But yeah, then, they need to kind of be smaller, really. But but I don't. Know, this is this is different than the than the the other games of the type, since it's uh, since you're going to be able to. Um, yeah, remember you know, though, the like, camera's going to be down there, and so it, it, you know, eh, maybe it maybe it will work in this type. Uh, so it's hard to say for sure, but. It's something to to at least where, question. Where we plan on using um, these sorts of things, these vehicles? In in the um, what what you call it the the that the matches. What are they called? The um, yeah. They just they well, they walk on their own. They just kind of walk to. It, 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 they go to the enemy base, but uh, assuming that they can make it. Creeps, minions, that kind of thing. And I thought about like a specialized unit for this guy right here. And again, I'm not sure how involved we want to do, but why think just like two dimensions where you have the two sides here and everyone's fighting? Is it a possibility that you have a specialized unit that can dig holes and go in through here like this and create its own new lanes? Uh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that, that, well, that, no. that would kind of break the gameplay quite substantially. That was shut down pretty nice and tight. I was just thinking, thinking outside yeah. the box. Yeah. And again, I try to make these guys not so human-esque. Where's my... There we go. Over here. Um, again, just throwing out a uh, shotgun effect, different ideas and stuff like that. So, Mr. J, your thoughts? Um, I, I do think the siege minion, not the siege mission minions, but like the very last ones, after you break like the inhibitor or whatever we're going to call it, those can be bigger than the champions. Um, yeah, okay, I'll give you that. But I, but I think the rest of them do need to be sort of smaller. Um, I, I kind of like those drill looking hands, I'm not going to lie, they look pretty cool. But that'd be like, you could use like drills for melee weapons, I, I'd be cool with that. That would be kind of nice, unless it's being used on you. Then that would suck. You know, the in in some games, I don't know if it was Warcraft Three or something, but uh, real time strategy games, they've they've had uh, units where they can uh, dig under the ground and they can they can kind of hibernate there for a bit and come back out. So I mean, you could maybe do something like that. Although I don't think that really fits this game style. I think the one down the bottom left here probably fits a smaller, fast minion um, that's kind of weak, where the other two oh. are sort of more of a siege minion. And this well, little red guy right here would be a uh, normal size of our heroes. These guys would be just a little bit bigger. Would that work? Yeah, I think so. The, the thing is that well, there are... One of the reasons... Well, one of the reasons why I'm saying that um, mobs should be smaller than um, heroes is essentially because if you have a field of mobs um, in a lane, you'll want to be able to identify the champion easily. So if the champions are a good kind of head and a half over the standard minions, uh, you can see them easily. Well, one thing to consider is that they can all the minions uh, can be the same color scheme, you know, so then you have the heroes with uh, uh, maybe more uh, color that stands out a little bit more, and uh, just through that, and not looking like the same thing, I think they can stand out. Uh, uh, How about if we were to have easily. something? Keep on talking while I uh, do a couple of little sketches. Uh, what do you think about that, Nito? I didn't quite hear the last of what you said there. 
Um, I was saying that uh, just the color scheme alone uh, would, uh, if you know, you have you have a certain kind of a dull. Um, uh, oh yeah, champions. You know. Champions won't be team colored, whereas mobs will be. Right. So so which that is fine, can... which is the problem is that, like I say, it becomes a case of easily identifying, picking out, and assessing character movement, especially from the third person view. Uh, so that's where the kind of the, the height comes in. I think you'd be surprised at what you can see in that view. Um, I don't think it would be that much of an issue. But it should be easy enough to adjust the heights once you have them all. The, and they're, they're not, there's not going to be like a million, uh, 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 what, what do they call them? Not, uh, minions at, at, on the screen at any time. So it's, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it, it's kind uh, of a I, modest group, right? Yeah, while I see and understand what you're saying, it does, You'd be surprised at how much clutter you can get, even with a top-down camera, especially with targeting and whatnot, which, when we take it into a third-person camera, you're going to have a lot more things in between you and the opponent. And I want to try and keep them, not like ridiculously short, but notably shorter. But as you say, we can tweak that once we have the models and once we have them in-game. Also... sold by um, tab targeting as well. To I don't like that? tab targeting. It kind of loses uh, a yeah. bunch of the skill of the game. Then how are you going to target an MMO? The same way as you target in the match. Point and click targeting. Or radial targeting or AOE dependent. Yeah. That gets really hectic in big mob fights. Trying to click on the right target. That is part of the point. When we actually, well, also, we could implement a certain amount of tag targeting and target uh, focusing for the PVE section if it turns out to be required. Um, I dislike the concept of fixed targeting. I dislike the concept of tab targeting for okay, so this game type. What, what if a minion gets in the way of clicking on an enemy hero? Well, that, I mean, this is this is stuff that. Um, can be ironed out as once we get things actually implemented where we can see how it feels and then adjust and change. So I mean, it's, we, we don't have to come well, up with that all now. And to okay. respond, to respond, this is part of the reason why I want to keep the height low for the mobs, so that you can still can keep the uh, eye line and ability to target. Because sometimes you may want to target your abilities against mobs. True. But if you if you want to tap if you have if you if you only have majoritarily tab targeting where you can tablet uh, you can target um, probably only champions because otherwise you'd be tapping through all the minions on the screen at the same time. It becomes kind of tricky to do. Well, one another thing to consider is uh, the the thinness of the of the robots. Uh, a, you know, a thicker one more. Uh, tank-like will be harder to see past. Also, this is this is it's not it's not a first-person camera. It is a third-person camera, so you do have a bit more of a of a height looking down rather than say, as I say, a first-person. Um, and I would want to play quite loose with the camera anyway because you, you need the vision um, around your character. Otherwise, you you are at risk of being attacked from the back or the side, which makes the game less engaging as if you keep dying every you know couple of seconds because you don't have the vision around you. Idea for this guy right here, uh, just an idea, almost like a power suit. So the minions, they could be normal battle guys with this different armor, chain gun, missiles, power source through here, then you can have your champions who are, who are built a little bit taller. Would you want to go something in that route? So they just look like humans in power armor? Or would you you guys want to go for the robot look? Uh, for the for the min, uh, minions, sorry. Yeah, for the minions. 
Um, I think with the amount of minions you're going to get through in the course of a game, I think having actual humans slash Lithians doesn't really work. Um, having something that's that's sort of pseudo disposable, like a robots or uh, the Lithian creatures, which read which don't read in the same ways as humans or Lithians would, because they are your character type. Um, True, I agree. I concur, but I wanted to throw it out. And do we want a robot to be, like I said, more human-esque, or can we throw like four or five different legs on them? Um, I'd keep them vaguely humanoid, mostly because then we don't have to mess around with coming up with lots of different animations, uh, and nobody has to kind of animate kind of quadruped or, or octoped or any sort of ridiculous combination of, of legs, walking, running, animations. Well, the, the thing I think about that is that in the actual game, I mean not the actual game, but the in the open world game, there's probably going to be a lot of different types of creatures and we're probably going to uh, want to do more than just uh, two-legged creatures. Yes, but try and basically I'm saying don't like the uh, the walking script or the walking animation you'd write for something like a like a horse or or a wolf or any sort of any sort of standard two legged creature would be a very different walking cycle to something like the thing that Derek's drawing now, which is much more like a four legged spider movement. Um, right. So well, yeah, okay, we're going to have, want to have more animation scripts than. Um, just the the bipedal, but we don't want to. We also don't want to overload the the phase one, as it were, uh, right. by mandating that we have, you know, the different. We have three different mobs that have, you know, a different animation script, a different walking script. Than the a, a, a lot script of games. Is the wrong word, but there we go. Right. A lot of games uh, do have spider type creatures, so. and and this is an alien world too, so we might, you know. Wanna... Eventually, yeah, we can definitely branch off, but uh, for the beginning, uh, th I guess the thing I have reservations are for the uh, crap, the animals, the dogs I was thinking about having the Elethians have for uh, their DPS, their quadrupeds. If we want to move away from that, we can do that as well to make it as easy so we can get something done in the beginning. Hmm. Well, I don't know, quadrupeds, we've got quite a lot of quite a lot of reference material um, and quadrupeds have been done quite substantially in other games so I don't feel like having a quadrupeds, I'm no animator so I don't know how difficult it would be um, but I imagine doing something more than with doing something with more than four legs is probably a lot more difficult than doing something with four um, assuming you can you can do a bipedal reasonably well um, so I wouldn't say that that having these wolf um, mobs is going to cause a problem. They might not be the first ones to be implemented. We might implement whatever we start with, like the base, like uh, like a temporary um, melee creep, and then replace it with a more complicated mesh and animation later on. All right, that works. Yeah, basically bipedal is going to be easiest. <clears throat> Any quadrupedal that is similar to something that exists, we can probably find some mm. animations for without having to animate them, but otherwise they would be roughly twice as hard. But yeah, he, I mean, he's right. Once you go past four legs, that's going to start to get really complicated. <clears throat> it, it, not so much complicated, it's very time consuming to animate. Well, there goes my centipede idea. <laughs> uh, can you take my screen for a second? Yes, please. Well, actually, you know, a centipede would be relatively easy to animate because you probably wouldn't actually animate each leg. You just have like a undulating legs texture. At least that's how Ooh. I think. It yeah, yeah. Basically, you could animate the first two and then just copy paste it and offset the timing all the way down. <laughs> nice. I love you guys. You're so smart. Sometimes it's hard just being the good-looking one, but I live with it. 
but it, but Derek wouldn't know. <laughs> do you remember this guy? I do. So I was thinking as uh, like a hero, this type of thing uh, could um, just because, uh, you know, just thinking that uh, the concept was that uh, that there would be um, uh, people uh, who are um, missing limbs and whatnot and uh, you would need uh, uh, to have uh, uh, what do you call it? Bi uh, no, wait. <laughs> Prosthetics? Yeah, but uh, well, anyway, uh, so they'd have to have uh, all this uh, this kind of prosthetic stuff. But uh, and uh, my theory, or my theory, my idea on this one was that he could, he could be um, placed in uh, with different legs, but uh, you could decide something like uh, like this. This was like his war legs because uh, they. Uh, moved him around uh, fast, and they were stable, and had all you know this stuff room for uh, things. But uh, he could climb over uh, up hills and things. But uh, I, I just think uh, you know that 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 would allow if if we could do interesting stuff like that, blurring the line between human and machine. We could have some very interesting heroes rather than just them all looking kind of like, uh, you know, some dude. <laughs> no, I agree. The problem is coming up with the content for it, which is always going to be the problem with this project. Um, right. So if you want to anim if you want to model it and animate it, then by all means, um, or if you want to get someone to, you know, um, I'm. When we come to actually making and designing the, the classes, character classes, um, having quite a diverse base is, is sort of what I'm interested in doing. Having a what? Having a diverse um, set of character appearances based on, you know, from the class. Uh -huh. So that, you, like you say, you won't end up with a bunch of just people that don't look right. uh, any different from one another. Right. Like if you look at something like um, League of Legends, one of the things right. they different. really have, they have, yeah, they have vastly different character appearances, which is one of the reasons why uh, their combat works so well, is because you can clearly identify who's who based on their appearance. Right. All right, guys, with that, this is the top of the hour. Let's go ahead and take a seven-minute break, pause uh, for the calls. Take, take the screen back. Okay. Please. When we come back, we will continue our discussion and how we're going to move forward. I'd like to kind of nail down what we want the robots to look like tonight. And uh, like Steve said, hard surface modeling is a lot easier in many aspects than organic modeling. If we could nail this down tonight, uh, we can start modeling. Oh, hold on. I do not want to leave the webinar. OK. Um, we can start modeling soon. So uh, when we come back, let's really put our heads together and find out at least one to two robot type looks and feels that we want. So with that, Mr. Fifty Shades and Nelson, take us out. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Here's truly Derek T. Stevens, the pro on the forums. I have personally decked the halls with fa la 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 la. I'm not for sure what Nelson's doing. I think he's eating a sandwich. So we are back uh, talking more about the robots and uh, really kind of want to nail them tonight so we can find a way, well, start modeling to get more stuff done and, and, and trudging and moving ahead. Uh, but before we get back into the robots, Mr. J just buzzed me and said, hey, he's got some more turrets for us to look at. And I said, it's about time. And he said, I know, I'm sorry, I'm a disappointment. And then Steve said, well, too bad you are, which I said he's not. So, so Mr. J, again, I don't care what Steve says about you. Mr. Fifty Shades and Nelson, can you take his screen, please? Steve's? No, uh, Mr. Uh, Jisbus. Yeah, I'm too busy having a headache after that. <laughs> there we go. I got like a smaller, a stubbier cannon, like a minigun, and like box missile launcher kind of thing. Nice. 
I think all of those quite look quite nice. What about kind of the the head that you had um, in the old one, but two mini guns on the side? Does that make sense? Oh, so like the similar like the big boxy thing with the mini guns on both sides? Yeah. Are you going to do it now? So yep. Out of interest, to what end? Just, just for appearance, or um... yeah, just um, for the aesthetics. Okay. We'll have to tone down the minigun because they has a lot of polys in like the gun part. But <laughs> <laughs> welcome to cylinders. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting to oh, see even, even Max. Got, you know, barreled as well. Yeah, that's because I stole them from the cannon. <laughs> <laughs> if it works, it works. Work smart, not hard. So explain loosely what you're doing. Are you copying and pasting or duplicating actually? Uh, oh, look at that, duplicating. Woo. See, all we have to do is hit Control D after we select our, our stuff in Maya. It's a lot easier. I just shift drag. I'm not sure Maya is easier than shift drag. Shift dragging. <laughs> if you look at it from like a side angle, you can kind of see what it would look like without a middle bit. I like that. It's intimidating. Yeah, it sort of puts it on par with the other two guns now, because the big cannon's kind of more intimidating than one minigun. But it depends on what you're attacking, though, isn't it? Um, if you're attacking infantry, the minigun's probably going to be a lot more scary. Yeah, I would not want to face any of them. Go get them, Ray. Ghostbusters uh, reference there for all of you. I know. Yeah, Max is is awesome. It's just so neat to watch you work because Maya does not look like that at all. Yeah, I find Max is a lot more intuitive to working, but you kind of get... My problem now is I'm yeah, yeah I'm mixing Illustrator keys with Max keys, and it's throwing me off. <laughs> what, um... The view, your viewport looks slightly different. Are you using a special uh, rendering setting? Um, I'm using Realistic in 2013. Ah, uh, 2013, right, okay. So they're shaded. That's probably what you're more used to. Yeah. <laughs> so a reason to buy 2013. <laughs> or get the student version and then use it for whatever. Yeah, I guess. What? No, I like it. I like it. It's coming along. Um, I think those kind of variations um, are a lot nicer, partly because you have the, the smaller profile. And I can see those rotating a lot easier than um, the longer cannon. And I think also because you've got that, because you've, you've shortened down the front uh, armor, those legs don't look as... They were too small on the other gun. Like, I was going to increase the size on that one, but... Yeah, they don't look as unbalanced. I think making them slightly less organic looking would be be a, a, a good idea, but they look better with that sort of scale of, of, of gun on top. And, and maybe on the bottom, I can't remember if this is already said, but on the bottom of each of uh, uh, those back uh, stilts, I don't know what we're calling them, but uh, if, if there is a little bit uh, a flattish uh, plate that uh, uh, maybe could be uh, 
nailed down or something. Okay. Yeah, but like the big one, I originally assumed there was a structure underneath it, so it's just the like uh, unburied parts that came out of the ground. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that that would do it as well. I mean, I figure the ammo has to come from someplace, so it's probably under underneath there. Yeah. It still kind of looks like something a a rocket or something could destroy quite easily. Um, are we thinking about maybe having some sort of shielding? Protecting these things, or um, I really, honestly, wasn't. But like, that that might be true. But they're mostly for stopping infantry. Because remember, you've got the infantry guys going in there, and the big, big guys that look like they can break the towers at once. Get that are going to break them fast. Because the you know MOBA, the towers are very, very tough to start off with, and um. They don't sort of, you're not able to kill them until sort of halfway through the game. Well, most characters won't have like rocket looking things. They'll like run up there at level one and you'll be firing like a pistol at it. And I don't think you'd be taking out the turrets with a pistol or like even like an assault rifle or something like that. Because the turrets to scale with a person, the person's not going to even like stand over that shield there. Looks good, dude. <clears throat> All right, so uh, let's know now what we want the robots to look like so we can start modeling them, maybe get uh, at least a model done by next week. It could be in invisible except for their thong. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds pretty sexy. Well. Yeah, I've modeled like 20 invisible jets today already. I like that better. That's good. Same on poly counts. Oh, never mind. I figured I'd cut some of them out because um, it still wasn't too high poly. It was still less than the previous gun. I'd be under 2,500 with uh, eight barrels instead of the, I think it's like 12 I have there. Okay. Makes sense. So back to the robots, guys. <clears throat> From what I'm understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, we want them smaller than our heroes, correct? Um, I, I th th does it necessarily matter? I mean, we we can we can change their their scales. Now we just have to create. Um, a look, and they can look kind of like big buff robots that are actually small size. You know, I mean, it, it, you know, when we end up doing it, so we probably don't even really need to know scale yet. That's a very relative point, or valid point. What do you guys think? Well, from a design perspective, I think we were talking. They need to be like character size or shorter just so you can target the characters or the minions like from the third person perspective um, depending on which one you actually want to target makes sense because I would be hiding behind big ass robots like shoot them not me <laughs> alright so uh, are we going to go for the smoother look or we're saving that for the Elysians and we want more pointy I think we want more pointy. I think we want joints, maybe kind of like the turret joints, where you see like the big, obvious, like chunky, I don't know, axles or whatever they are between there, or how the axles would fit in. Um, just because that'll easily set it apart from the Elysian units. True. Mr. Fifty Shades, can you take my screen again, please? All right. So let's see here. Going to edit, copy, file, new, say OK, edit, paste, bring this guy up here, hit control T, shift, drag, enter, 
Take the transparency down a bit. Create a new layer. So here we go. Do we want these guys look more human-esque like this, humanoid? Anybody still there? Okay, good. Um, I, I thought I was alone. Like, oh crap. Yeah. I, was... I, I think we want them to look more robot -y than human. So, like, maybe bipedal, but not necessarily with, like, a tor like an obviously human portion body. Like, it, they should probably look like there's not a human inside them, you know, inside of this gear. But, uh, uh, but yeah. So maybe you want like the melee guys up front to be like exaggerated like orangutan kind of things. So they've got like longer arms for so they can hit harder when they do melee stuff. And then the guys and ranch guys in back could be like skinnier than people. Look like they so they look like they'd be able to move faster. Um yeah. That was kind of what I was thinking. So we're going to be doing a ranged attack look. Well, we're, we're doing both. Uh, I mean, just this guy I'm working on right now. Yeah, the guy looks like he'd be like a ranged attack kind of guy. You just want to make the, like his, I don't know. I think they should have tiny heads because they're not that smart. Um, so like emphasize like the arms and legs more than anything else and make them like skinny-ish. Now, do we want, and I like Wolf's idea, instead of fingers like this, actually have uh, their hands be weapons. Makes sense to me. I, I like that idea. You could have it have um, fingers and basically so that they, they can either be a melee or a range, depending on what they're equipped with. Well, well will, will they actually be doing that? In game, will they be uh, switching, or will they just be shooting uh, people when they're up close in melee? Uh, the ranged ones generally just shoot people, um, yeah, even when it, they're close. Right. So if that's what we're doing, we we should just have them be guns. So I mean, you could give them fingers, but the fingers would be like the barrels of a minigun. <laughs> Gun fingers. It's like a James Bond uh, villain. Well, uh, apparently NATO would like to weigh in, but he had connectivity issues, and he's currently muted. Nelson. Uh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Welcome Hello. Back. So yes, um, yeah. So if you want to have, um, we want to have three basic types. Arranged a melee and a siege. Um, we'll deal with the the special type later. Um, if you want to have them, um, the range of the melee appear similar or almost almost identical, but have different equipment. I'm fine with that. Um, I think it would reduce the amount of assets we have to create, and that's not a bad thing. Um, they would also appear a bit more genericized. Um, but again, uh, on the other hand, identifying them will become a little bit. Yeah, I think they really need to be identifiable. Um, well, to be identifiable, you just give them a giant, ridiculous, like giant, ridiculously large weapon in their hand, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so the base model, I think, can be very similar. Um, well, what I was thinking for the uh, melee guy is one of the. Um, hands could be, uh, and it's because you you said uh, uh, somebody, uh, maybe Derek or somebody was saying, uh, re referenced the uh, uh, aliens, the aliens movie, where um, they have that uh, mech thing that's just like a fork uh, lift. Uh, 
So if they if it had if it had something like that, but it could be um, it could be sharpened. So it's uh, it's like it can pinch or stab, like or just be used. That, that See, I'd rather just have a massive hammer or like a big, big like uh, you know the you know the that could work too on um, on like uh, plant vehicles. You have those huge, great big pneumatic drills that are designed to break up concrete. Have one of those huge, great big hammering drill things. Um, so it is it is kind of almost ha ramping, uh, ramping up the, not the stupid, but the kind of s almost silly uh, aspects to a certain degree. Yeah, and you could also do something like a gigantic circular saw on the end of his arm, just because that would set it really apart from the gun barrel pretty well, too. Yeah, yeah. So, or yeah, you could even do, do one arm as a circular saw, and the other arm is like a big pneumatic hammer. Yeah, basically not silly, just some ridiculous proportions. Right. Kind of yeah. Gears of War-ish. It's kind of over the top a little bit, but not in a goofy way, in a, like, boy, aren't I a bad A kind of way. Hmm. And I'll do the sound effects. <laughs> I'm, I'm liking the chainsaw. I'm not gonna lie, the chainsaw is pretty sweet. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, and uh, I'm still, I'm still for the, the other hand being a sawed-off shotgun-ish thing, uh, a la years. Yeah, the only problem though is you're trying to distinguish it from. The other character that has guns for hands, so it needs to be less gunnish and more power tool kind of thing. Its head could be a gun. Just saying. So could its crouch. <laughs> that doesn't mean it should be either. And it's there we go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I knew we'd get there. Yeah. Um, Undo, please. You kind of you have to keep in mind that okay, realism says one thing, but this is at the end of the day quite going to be end up quite a silly game, um, and I think it, get, getting the pitch right of kind of almost ridiculousness with realism is going to be a little tricky because we don't want to go super cartoony, or we don't even want to go almost as cartoony as like La La Wow or something like that. Uh, people mentioned Wildstar as as um, their art style, for one thing. Uh, if you look at their media, they are very, very silly in their kind of implementation. I'm not sure we want to go kind of that level. Um, so just try and keep in mind kind of how you feel about the game, how the, how you feel about the theme that's coming along so far. I mean, we don't actually have much documented about like that that side of things. Um, how we want the, the game to feel rather than the look. Right. Good point. I went brain stupid for a second. Here we go, get up here. So one quick concept. Next concept. Do Okay, so we got the chainsaw on this guy right here. He wanted a big ass hammer. Excuse my French. Big hammer. Still keeping with kind of the same. I think a good way of kind of thinking about it is if people know the Warhammer setting where things are big and bulky and huge and clunky, but they're not kind of soft right. and and, and uh, cartoony. That uh, would be a nice one. some silliness in their, in their kind of implementation, but in a fun their way. Design is, but yeah, it's that kind of um, but, but, theme but they think people would like. Right, but they still, I mean, they, they still like, you know, they look like, uh, the orcs look like bad dudes, and they, they still have a toughness to them, but there's a, a silly, there's a playfulness in the toughness. Yeah, that's that's kind of the feeling I'm getting from people. Uh, I don't know if that's accurate to to 
everyone's feelings are. I, well, I like it. <laughs> Anybody else? Can you uh, link some uh, examples? Uh, yeah, give me yeah, yeah, and you, you I, I mean, I, I'm assuming you mean that, like, uh, Warhammer, uh, was it 4000 or something? Like, I, I, haven't, yeah. I haven't played the sequel one, but the, the real-time strategy game, uh, that that was, the animation was really fun. It's uh, made it fun to, to watch as you uh, play it. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I know it. The style you're talking about. Yeah, I like yeah. that. There's a post in in Burnsnet, which is not a great example, but you see the the <coughs> variation in scale to style, um, and how it kind of it's ridiculous, but it's not cartoony. Uh, like how uh, Wildstar is kind of Wildstar and Wow, yeah, I, and Lol and I just looked at Wildstar and they're utterly ridiculous. So when you're saying ridiculous, the, the proportions for this robot up here, is this the proportions you're looking for? Do you want to go even more over the top? I think compared to like human scale, I don't think that's too far off. Um, it depends on it depends on how how big and bulky we make the the heroes. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Basically, short answer. <laughs> I, I think it's pretty good just because of how big the weapons are, and I think the things are going to be end up being at least a little bit shorter than the player characters. So those those. Big weapons will actually like look still look fairly realistic, even if they do look a little bit silly. Also, really, uh, a lot of the what was uh, uh, a lot of what gave the impression of all that wasn't just that the, the the wasn't just its design, but the animation was playful. So it's that, that kind of combination. So it's like you can, yeah yeah I mean if without without kind of the right kind of animation it's uh, it's not really going to sell it I don't think. Who do we have who can animate by the way to a decent level? Well, I've never animated, but I, I assume I'm a master. <laughs> I stayed all night at a Super 8 last night, or Best Western. I've animated before, but it's I, I'm not particularly fast with it. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I can animate and do good animations, but I'm not speedy. I I feel like I that is something that I could do, well if I learned. <laughs> can we I, not I just use like that. Motion Builder? I mean, we'd have to get a license for it though. How would that work? Because you got tons of animations. You skin it, drop it, and go. Or would that Mixamo be cheating? Is another one. Do you mean Mixamo? Because Motion Builder is an Autodesk program. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I thought we were doing. So um, I was a little bit surprised when we started talking about animation. But they only really do um, bipedal. We'll just have to stick to mostly bipedal then. At least until later on, just so we can get stuff done in this first section. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I was trying to say before, um, yeah. with keeping it quite simple. Yeah, because I know like the couple animations I've done took like three weeks, and it was just like simple like run tests, or like run tests just to get them right. It took forever, just doing it from scratch. I mean, to get them to like seamlessly loop and all that kind of stuff, it's just incredibly yeah. tedious. So if we are going to go um, the Mixamo route, having the minions with um, actual weapons as arms, I don't think would be a good idea, because none of their animations support that. 
I can alter animations much more quickly than actually create them from scratch. So if all I have to do is edit a punch animation to cut out the hand or wrist motion, like that doesn't take much time at all. Okay. Because, I mean, it, it, it's like you take a karate chop animation and you leave the hand off, basically. I mean, that's how you get, like, a sword swing with no hand. All right, now, and just to be clear as mud, these guys will be a little bit smaller and shorter than our heroes. We don't know that yet, but well, in theory, there's a good chance. I would say more than likely they will be, like 99% yeah. sure, just because of the way we're going to target stuff. It's really going to end up being down to the testing. All right. Uh, but currently, because assume so. I, I, th <laughs> um, I, I think NATO was making uh, uh, the observation that, uh, uh, or at least the point that uh, if if the mechs or the minions and stuff were much bigger. Uh, the 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 heroes might seem less important and kind of uh, uh, weaker or something. But uh, on the flip side of that, I, I would also think if you're if you're tearing through these giant mechs or whatever, uh, you're going to feel tougher than if you're like stepping on ants. <laughs> Just. The problem is visibility. Like you have to be able to see the enemy player because the enemy yeah. player is going to destroy you if you can't if you can't see them. So you have to also, keep them. Also, they are the them. ultimate target as well. So yeah, well, the, the they are only always there to be a source of income right. and a source of XP. So honestly, but, the minions are going to be ants. Like that that's what they're supposed to be. Like the super minions at the end. Yeah, you should feel like you're killing something big when you kill those. But in terms of the things that just run down the lane, they should be like well. Cheap. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, that's a way to go. I, I don't think that it necessarily has to be that way. I, I, it's obviously that that's those other two uh, games have uh, obviously gone that route, but uh, uh, I don't think that that's necessary. I, I, one th one uh, workaround is, you, yeah, you can have a button that you press to uh, kind of uh, see through the uh, minions, so you can kind of do that. They kind of pick on a transparency, and, and so you could only uh, then you, you would only be able to uh, to select uh, heroes, so you could uh, check for that or something like that. Well, you, my could, you, could, you could possibly have like a like a hot key you could hold. Like if you hold shift, you can only target heroes. I mean. Again, like I said, that's all, that all comes down to testing. Right. Um, right. I want to do a really cool war hammer for his hand, and uh, for the life of me, I will need to Google a, a hammer or something to make it... I, I can't think of it. Uh, what are those things called that the judges use? And they, you know, gavel. A gavel. Gavel. Yeah. <laughs> a giant gavel. A giant yellow uh, gavel. That that makes a kind of a honky sound when it smashes. <laughs> awesome. This would be where the the oh. missiles. Go ahead. I'd be I'd be tempted if you put a gavel in his hand to put him in a robe, and any time he hits you, he'd have to say objection overruled. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Take off that bra. Objection overruled. Uh, All right, so uh, we got some sort of big, gaudy-looking shield here, and then in this arm, and then this arm we have it would shoot up to three missiles at a time, and this is where be I guess the magazine would defeat it. Again, just trying to come up with some big bulky type ideas. What do you guys think about that? I think you should put the chainsaw arm on the guy with the shield because that'd be a pretty good, pretty cool looking melee guy. Chainsaw right. and shield. Uh, well, chainsaw don't, hand don't, and don't, shield. Don't, 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 don't keep that, but make a copy and then do that because that was neat. Uh, one, of the, one of the problems with mixing. Um, the, the sort of ranged and the right. 
Yeah, that's why I say and put a chainsaw there, just because that's going to be more like what you're actually going to see is the big melee guy. Because you don't want to have yeah. like the ranged stuff on the melee character. It's going to be more readable, basically. And then on like, the ranged guy, you might want to give him like basically two guns or, I don't know. It would probably have to be a gun for each hand. Yeah, I agree. So it's sort of like the sword guy, except for with guns instead of swords. I like this look. I definitely like the shield. Uh, I don't like the two blades. I'm not really a big fan of that. I like this chainsaw-looking thing. It looks more intimidating to me. What do you guys think? It looks more intimidating. I agree. The blades kind of look like they don't have much man uh, maneuverability uh, without that extra joint for the wrist. Oh, yeah, because it's similar. Like they'll hack up and down straight at you. What what about trying one with uh, forklift arms? Yeah, that's called aliens too. No, no, it's called aliens. Oh shit! You're right. Crap. <laughs> I got schooled. I got schooled. All right. Yeah. So this is the arm, shoulder, elbow. And then you do you want? The, you wouldn't need a forearm, you'd just need a flat plate that you could rotate the saw on, kind of. Sort of like, take the wrist and move it up to like, towards the elbow, and then you'd have the chainsaw where it was at, basically. What? Take his screen. Draw something. <laughs> Alright, I don't have my thing on there, but uh, I'll just pull up. I think you do a horrible, horrible drawing. You will not do a horrible drawing, I believe in you. I believe you can fly. The children of the future. I know I mix my songs up. It's all right. I am actually drawing with a mouse. You'll have to forgive me. So, yeah. In here. time. In time, I'll learn to forgive me. <laughs> no, we'll just do this in 3D. How about that? Uh, so, oh, now you're showing off. Now you're showing off. What so basically, the... basically what you would do is like this one. You would basically have the arm be like this upper part, and then the lower part would be that. And then you'd have like a turret kind of thing for the saw, so you could rotate it, so you uh. could like swing your arm from different angles. So you just have the saw mounted on a rotating plate kind of thing. Gotcha. So it'd be like yeah. All right, I understand now. I also understand you know, You do not want to draw in front of people with a mouse. I would not want to do that either. Yeah, that was... I can paint with a mouse, but I can't draw with a mouse. It's all good. All right, so my my goal by next week is to model out this, this robot with the shield and the buzzsaw thing. At least a base that we can look at and say, okay, this is working, this is not working. That's my own personal goal. Um, what else would you guys like to see done? And who wants to volunteer and step up? Um, I could model one of the robots too. Uh, okay. Yeah, I should probably uh, see if, see about getting that into uh, whatever it is um, Unity too. Getting the height map into Unity. But I have to learn how to use Unity first. Like I haven't even really opened it yet. Steve and Nelson can tell you all about Unity. Nelson can tell you all about Unity. I taught Steve how to use Unity. Yeah. Ex except Steve hasn't rebuilt his other computer yet, so he still can't open Unity. <laughs> that would be a problem. All right, so hopefully we'll have at least two robots we can look with next week. How about uh, 2D side? What do we want to design? I'd like to get some towers, the first two towers from the Alethian's point of view and the human's point of view on paper. Wolf, would you be interested in doing something like that? What do you mean towers? The the turrets are the towers for the humans. Oh. I was so we, picturing... Like a guard mind. tower kind of thing? Yeah, the, the towers are going to be basically... The towers are really like turret emplacements more than an actual tower. They don't uh, have people in them. They're automated defenses. I got you. So we need like an an Alethian kind of an Alethian looking tower or turrets too, basically. Yeah, well, that's something to think of, Wolf. What are the Alethians going to have for towers? Some sort of crystal energy weapon. 
Yeah, I was thinking something with like crystal focusing lenses or like focusing lenses around a crystal that would like rotate somehow. So like those weird like planet things you see in like World of Warcraft or Alchemy things where they sort of rotate on different axes. It's kind they, of thinking they, like a crystal with like lenses rotating around it. They Oof. could they could, but you could also go another way and have it actually uh, be um, more of a tower and uh, have uh, like uh, uh, an, a lithium in there um, actually um, uh, uh, doing you know either you know throwing things or or. Uh, uh, using magic. The yeah. problem with that is poly counts. Because um, yeah. if you're going to even have the upper body of an lethean, you've just added 5,000 polys probably to the tower. I was or... thinking some sort of like floating crystal that rotates and targets towards your enemy and fires like a beam. Yeah. Wisdom to like that. The, right, other well, gonna... oh, sorry. the other one no, I was no. thinking was like uh, sort of like sort of like an Aletheid version of a missile launcher where you'd have like crystals that would actually fire out of like some rock surface or rocky looking crystal thing that would turn and face people. So I'd be shooting like shards of stuff. But we could do three or four towers for the Aletheans just like we did for the humans. Yeah. All right. Wolf, you up to the challenge? Uh, I don't know. Um, I, I don't see it yet. Just this thought I had before um, as well with the minions, um, like the idea I guess from the human side is they would have a factory sort of pumping out these robots. Um, have we ever thought about maybe having to maintain like a resource into those factories? And that could be a strategy that you cut off their resource supply. Well, the, the basically the production. entire purpose of the game is to destroy the resource factory. Um, generally, the main base is the re is where you build stuff. I well, know that's last stuff you build. Well, motor, or, or, where, yeah. I'm trying to think of something else that would make it different and stand out. I think getting a test bed first, and then if we want to change anything based on that test bed, is probably going to be the the objective currently. So yeah. basically, okay. let's not let's not change too much until we know that the third person camera system is actually going to work and we're not going to break everything else by implementing that. Uh, Derek, I think I'd rather work on uh, on uh, some of the ideas I have for buildings. And, uh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, we do need like one central structure for each side that will produce the little units that run out. Yeah, like I... I um, have some ideas for the Aletheian side, especially. All right, uh, oh, Nelson, can you grab my screen quick? Do we have um, textures for the first level? Um, we aren't done with textures yet, but I'd rather get all of the models in and then start texturing them before we start worrying too right, much about textures. You guys have Photoshop, right? Showing. I've got three yeah, buzz, okay. buzz net showing. Buzz. Come on, stop being slow. <laughs> Thank you. I got Photoshop? Yep. 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 Um, NATO, the, I was just fiddling around with creating some human uh, metal textures for walls and stuff. Mm -hmm. Just kind of want to see if that's kind of what you have in mind for that base grungy metal. Um, yeah, they're reasonable. Are those in in NDO? No, these are just painted. Oh, okay. Uh, off, no, off of just one basic metal texture. Yeah, that looks reasonable to me. Alrighty. Look, look we'll at us go. We're getting assets. We're moving along. Not as fast as I want, but we're moving forward, and that's the most important thing. Right, so we know our assignments. We know what we got to do. Uh, Mr. Jisba and I will have two different robots for you guys to look at next week, and from there we can decide what we like, what we don't like, and, and move ahead that way as well. Uh, Mr. Wolf, you got your buildings to design. Anybody else need to throw anything out here before we wrap it up? 
I wouldn't mind working on like the, the terrain, but there's not really much I can do without any textures and models. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll, since I've got extra days off this week, I'll, I was actually going to see if I could get that height map into Unity, and I do. we do have a couple textures we could start throwing on for rocks and stuff. I'm sure there are rocks, or I could just model a couple quick rocks to use as placeholders for nothing else. Okay. All right, we got a plan. And again, I said we're moving forward, and that's good. We have a little team, and hopefully it will get bigger. The comic book is up, by the way, you know, the first six pages at 3D Buzz. If you've not seen it, go check that out. And be aware of Black Friday uh, at 3D Buzz. We have all sorts of stuff that's going to be going on. So I'm proud of you guys. I'm very happy with what we've created so far. I kind of miss that my, my robots do not have brawls or thongs on them, but, uh, you know, we can work that, that out. Perfect. It, it can be part of the microtransactions. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Our, our version of uh, horse armor. Yep. Okay. All right. Happy Thanksgiving, guys, to those who are in the States that celebrate it. You English guys, I'm glad we have our independence. <laughs> Well, they can have a happy Thanksgiving, too. It doesn't matter if they celebrate it or not. True. Uh, when I was at the Renaissance Center, this guy named Andy Katie, I love him to death. We had to work through Thanksgiving. They gave us food, but we worked there. Like, what the heck? You're English. You can't eat, eat. You can't eat turkey. This is not right. So he did, and he's a great guy, and I love the English. That's it. That's all I got. Someone make a snarky comment, please. <laughs> I'm not even going to. All right, guys, I'll get a post up soon. Um, a lot of the uh, end-of-year holidays here are falling on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so I'll get a post up for what weeks we're not going to have class here shortly. And Other than that, I hope everybody has a great holiday tomorrow, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. See you guys. Thanks for being here tonight.